Welcome to Ann Arbor Democracy, a place for conversation about how our local leaders are elected and how political decisions are made, what this looked like in the past, and what it looks like now. This project aims to explore the recent history and current reality of Ann Arbor Democracy. This is part three of an interview with Jerry DeGreek, who served on Ann Arbor City Council from 1972 to 1974 as a member of the Human Rights Party, or HRP. In 1972, two members of the HRP were elected to the Ann Arbor City Council, Jerry DeGreek from Ward 1 and Nancy Wexler from Ward 2. In parts one and two, Jerry talked about what motivated his political activism and the grassroots campaigns of 1972. In part three, Jerry talks more about the issues HRP fought for, how that work inspired his continued activism and professional career in Seattle. We also felt very much allegiance to, uh, to labor and to workers. And so um, once we were uh, elected folks to the council and were engaged in electoral politics, it did not mean that that is the sole way that we saw how the party ought to operate, the Human Rights Party would operate. We saw it very important for us to be involved in demonstrations um, as well as to support the movements of black people um, as well as um, labor uh, unions. And we, uh, we were very active in a number of strikes. I can't remember exactly which ones and the details of them, but we were on the picket line with, with, um, uh, with, with many working people and unions who were uh, uh, striking. That was part of how we saw the role of the party, not solely as, an, as um, uh, focused on, on electoral politics. You touched briefly on it, but there, the anti-discrimination ordinance, um, the, the event, the incident at the restaurant was, was on, on something. <laughs> like there was a demonstration at the yes. council meeting, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because there yes. wasn't, you didn't feel that the ordinance was being properly enforced. Exactly. That was the first opportunity um, since, well, I had come out anyway, or I had dealt with my homosexuality explicitly, that I was able to then, you know, support. Previously on the council, there were other opportunities for us to point out discrimination against or harassment of gay and lesbian people, but it wasn't until um, the Rubiat, and that's the name of the restaurant where the incident occurred of lesbians being harassed because they, women were actually dancing together. So there was a demonstration at the, the council, and I believe it was at that meeting when um, that Nancy and I both uh, came out publicly. Yeah. So you served under both a Democratic mayor and a Republican mayor Correct. in your term. And there was this composition of council in your first year and just your first year or was it? The, yeah, it would just just your first year where you were collaborating with Democrats. And, and, and actually, we there I can't remember the specific issues, but there were more than there, there was more than one issue in which we joined with the Republicans, actually, on a couple of different issues that we, um, we you know, voted as a block with, uh, with Republicans. So we were strategic, and, um, um, but for the main policy issues we've been talking about, like the marijuana ordinance and the, um, the uh, rights for sexual minority uh, people uh, and some of the other things, we, in the revenue sharing, uh, we did work with the Democrats on, yes. Um, and, and, and again, that first year, no party had a majority, so it was more fun. <laughs> and so what was, what was that like? Um, I, you know, I, reading articles of the day, I, 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 found, I found quotes from, a handful of quotes from Republicans that were somewhat disparaging of the ideas that the Human Rights Party was leading. <laughs> I'm um, not surprised. <laughs> right. But one thing I should say about the votes, there were also many, many votes where the Democrats and Republicans voted together against, and we were the two votes against, right? So right. so that was, a, that was you know, very significant as well. It wasn't just like in, a, in every vote we aligned with the Democrats and a few with the Republicans. It was often the Republicans and Democrats against HRP as well. It is interesting that we, you know, even in those days, 
we were able to get along to a degree with different council members, even from the different parties. Though I think the Democrats really resented us because we called out the fact that they were not willing to take the kinds of policy actions that we felt were necessary for the kind of change that we felt uh, people needed. People, uh, our constituents, uh, low-income people, people of color, students, um, uh, workers would, um, uh, would benefit from. I have more questions about the, this idea of community control and like the connection that you try to maintain with regular people or the party or just even being transparent about um, what you stood for and being consistent across the platform and the values of the party. What did it look like, um, the party meetings? Like how frequent were those? I, I People have told me stories of, you know, 20 years ago when council caucus was a thing. My I briefly participated in a council caucus with the same idea of, of creating more opportunity for community to engage. Like, what did that look like when the Human Rights Party would meet or talk to you and Nancy about wh- what was consistent with the party platform? Yeah, I think that that, you know, it, it changed at various times. It, it wasn't consistent, you know, in terms of, of uh, for all, you know, from 1971 through 1974 when I got off council, uh, there were there were changes in in uh, in how it happened. I think in the beginning, uh, in seventy one and in seventy two during the campaign and the first year, there were it was, they were much more robust. We had many more more people coming to meetings. I can't remember exactly what the schedule was of meetings. I want to say they were at least monthly, if not more, um, and that they were open meetings and people came and they would we would talk policy, we would talk uh, what what we were going to put forward or um, uh, both during the campaign and then once once we were elected. I think that they became less frequent after a while. And I think there was uh, probably less interest. I think that, that, that you know one of the learnings is that it is very hard to keep that level of community engagement, going. So I think there needs to be um, um, different ways to make that happen and not just having an open, like like in today's world, it would have to look very, very different, I think. Uh, that 50 years ago, no one had smartphones. Or, so, but to consistently engage with with um, uh, people is, a, um, is, is challenging because people have busy lives and particularly the constituencies that we wanted to uh, to reach. But there was a lot of interest, uh, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of interest and enthusiasm in the early mid-70s for what we were trying to accomplish. So there was a great deal of participation and, uh, and interest in the meetings. And not just the... Um, um, the party meetings, but actually, as you kind of alluded to, you know, demonstrations right at the city council. And uh, so that wasn't the, you know, what, what, what happened um, at the, uh, after the Rubiot incident where women were harassed uh, was not the only demonstration that, um, that we had so that people used the council as a forum to be able to advocate as well as to educate others. You know, all of our city council meetings were telecast, right? Uh, so that they were um, they were on local TV, uh, so that everybody could could see them. And actually, Nancy Wexter and I, we had a weekly TV show and radio show, I think, because we were kind of an anomaly, being young and radical and all that. So so we had th- those forums as uh, as well uh, to to reach people. Um, you know, which we used. And also one other thing I want to go back to is I mentioned that we weren't just concerned about electoral politics, but but supporting uh, causes and people in other ways like demonstrations or strikes or, or whatever on, on the picket line. We then brought those issues to the council so that we both you um, were engaged in them in a non-electoral way, but bringing those issues to fore at the council because we knew we had a wider audience um, to reach more more uh, people. 
So you mentioned earlier that you were on the planning commission for one year until Stevenson was elected mayor, and then you got off of it. Right. He this, kicked me off of it. He kicked you Let's off. Let's be of clear. I, I I would have loved to have stayed on for uh, for another year. And then many of the um, there was certainly a different constituency than had initially been involved in HRP, who very much appreciated HRP's stand on planning issues. Uh, for one thing, we were not going to be beholden to financial interest in 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 terms of making decisions about growth in um, in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I found a remarkable article outlining Kathy Kosachenko's platform around this. And I mean, I, I, my goodness, it was, it was so direct and so different than the kind of messaging that's happening now. Um, I mean, it was, she was very clear in saying like, the market is not going to solve our problems. Clearly, capitalism is not going to produce the housing that we need. And we need to be a lot more intentional about it. Right. And there was the McDonald's was uh, was yep, an yep. issue that you fought <laughs> the human rights. Right, program. right, right. Yes, um, we kept McDonald's out of Ann Arbor. I know. Eventually, years, years later, we lost that that uh, battle, and McDonald's is here in Ann Arbor, I believe. But uh, but 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 we kept them out. But there were many other issues, uh, which which we worked on. You know, in terms of the um, uh, planning. I know the. Uh, Briarwood is that what it's called? The, yeah, that's yeah. the mall. Yeah, right. We tried to um, to limit or stop that, but that we were not successful in that. But there were other things we did have 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 some successes uh, at the planning commission and and and, and therefore in the uh, council as well. How did the Human Rights Party frame opposition to growth like that? Because that this this is again where my eyes are wide as I'm reading these things because now the dogma is. Growth, 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 because it's tax base. It's all tax base, and this is all fundamentally a positive because once we have more tax base, we can spend it on all the good things. So let's just give it all away. Right. I think we had a very different perspective on that. You know, we wanted to see, you know, the the kind of growth happen that would benefit um, working people, lower income people, people of color, students, and and not just economic interest. And we were not as focused on the tax base. I can understand why city council members, that is a consideration, and I respect that, but that should not be the the uh, driver. Certainly when you're looking at issues like housing, for example, I think um, we had an eye back then, as I think is an issue right now in Ann Arbor as well, in, in, in terms of the type of housing that is being built, who it's being built for, and who benefits uh, and is it the landlord interest, or is it uh, to uh, to to meet the needs of uh, of um, uh, working people, students, uh, low income folks, people of color? And I think uh, that was the perspective we tried to to bring in um, on the planning commission and certainly on the uh, city council as well. I really appreciated very much, both politically and personally the opportunity I had to serve on the Ann Arbor City Council. You know, I love Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is a great town, a great community. Um, and I really appreciated the six years that I lived uh, in Ann Arbor. You know, I um, I thought about running again in the first ward. I was, um, um, maybe I was fooling myself, but I really, you know, the, in, in 74, when my term was up, April 74, neither Nancy nor I uh, ran again, and Kathy Kozachenko ran in the second ward, and that was the only council seat we won. We did not win the first ward, first ward uh, council seat in 1974. Maybe I'm fooling myself, but I think I could have won had I ha, ha, had I run. I know everybody says that, <laughs> but but I was you know I, I was a very conscientious council member and somewhat effective, I think, and. Um, I had the best attendance record of any council member, not that attend- showing up is the only thing or, 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 or whatever. But the reason I didn't run, in, in part, is because of the nature of electoral politics. Um, so I was young, right? I was 22 to 24 when I was on, on the council. I had just come out. And I kind of, you know, intuitively knew that I wasn't sure I wanted the notoriety that I had, not that that would have continued because we would have been, been old school after a while, um, but uh, but it can go to your head, um, which I think having the kind of 
political party like the Human Rights Party, not that a third party is necessarily viable at this point in history, um, is, is, it is good in that it's not about the individual you elect. It's about the policies and programs and what you can enact and fight for for people. It isn't about the individual. And I think electoral politics, even for me, you know, it, it, it is somewhat of an ego boost. You know, as I said, we had, Nancy and I had our own TV show and our own radio show. And, you know, at the age of 24, I realized I wanted to have a life. And um, and then maybe that wasn't, um, the electoral politics was not the direction that I wanted to go in. However, local government became the direction. Um, I moved away from Ann Arbor shortly after I got off council, in part because a lot of the people I knew were moving to the East Coast or West Coast, in part because I had just come out and felt it would be it was important for me to get away from my family, um, who was only 50 miles away. Since then, I we're all um, my 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 parents reconciled with who I was as a person, and and it, uh, and it was all good. So I did, I you know I did move to the West Coast. Um, you know, sh- uh, shortly after council, but I I spent my entire career in local government, and I think that is partly because of my experience in Ann Arbor. I've worked on many uh, different jobs and issues, employment and training programs, um, e- uh, education, after school, child care, human uh, human. Uh, Human, not human resources, human, services. Uh, human service. Thank you, human services. Um, you know, um, and and public health. Actually, I spent um, much of my career in uh, in public health and just uh, uh, retired about a year ago. Um, and um, I had the opportunity to work on many issues. I think which helped, which uh, could potentially impact people, including public health, financial empowerment, human services, education, and so on. So I kind of owe that to to Ann Arbor. Um, you know, uh, personally, I have been very blessed as well. Um, I um, uh, have two kids who I had in the context of. Um, of a gay relationship with a with a long term partner, we're no longer together, but we're still family and um, best of friends. So I'm blessed to have two adult kids and two grandkids now. Um, but in terms of my career and work, um, it was it, it was in local government at the city of Seattle, uh, Seattle Public Schools, and King County, and uh, Public Health Seattle King County. So I owe that to my time on the council. In addition to my time um, on on the Ann Arbor City Council and HRP and the Radical Independent Party, I think one of the things that um, in Seattle we were able to accomplish in 1978, which was the time of Anita Bryant and all the anti-gay initiatives around the country that were passing, uh, we and the two local policemen in Seattle promulgated an initiative to take away um, the rights of sexual minority people. And so we ran an extremely creative, low-budget campaign, much like we did in HRP days, uh, where we did grassroots organizing, door-to-door work, creative, <coughs> creative events, and so on. And we were <coughs> one of the few uh, cities in the country that were able to defeat uh, that, in, uh, that kind of initiative. Well, I mean, I think that your, your experience in Ann Arbor um, and what our community saw in the 1970s was the magic that can happen when there is more opportunity for people to get involved in a grassroots way and really focus on the right things. Yeah. Cause it's so easy for powerful people <clears throat> to be running the show. And, um, yeah. And yeah. Then, I mean, it's such a lesson too, right? It's a lesson uh, into, in what local government can accomplish that you saw in Ann Arbor and could carry forward to Seattle. Totally. And I think it's so, so important now, you know, the world is, is obviously a lot different than it was 50 years ago. And then now, you know, basic democracy is on the line um, Absolutely. In, in, in this country. And then it isn't just because we have the, you know, neo-fascist like Trump and Trumpism. It is also because do we really want big money to be determining everything? 
Um, and that's particularly true at the local level too. And, and and unfortunately, even at the local level, I understand that the kind of grassroots campaign, low budget campaign, uh, doesn't happen anymore in uh, in Ann Arbor. That is uh, that is driven by big money, and that is a threat to democracy. I I I can't believe what I have learned in the last week, um, digging into archives and learning about the work that you did in the 70s. And I, I thank you for talking to me. I really have enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very you much. So much. It's, it's been a pleasure kind of reminiscing and thinking back after all these years. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Take care. The success of the Human Rights Party is evidence of what is possible when enough people come together to challenge existing power structures and profit interests. After Jerry DeGreek and Nancy Wexler completed their terms, the Human Rights Party successfully elected only one more person to Ann Arbor City Council, Kathy Kozachenko, who represented Ward 2 from 1974 to 1976. Jerry and Nancy were the first openly gay elected officials in the United States. Kathy Kozachenko was the first openly gay candidate to win an election to public office in the United States. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be alerted to more content like this.